We want to thank our Father. Even as we have gathered tonight, we are grateful for the grace that he has given us to be able to stand in the gap. The Bible assures us that where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. We want to thank him for the glory of his presence in our midst. As we have come into his presence, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12. It says from verse 22 that, in fact, if you read the preceding verses, it tells you the kind of a mountain that the children in the Old Testament came to. They came to a mountain that was frightening, a mountain that was scary, a mountain that if anyone, whether animal or human being touched it, they would have to die. They came to a, a presence of God that could kill, that could destroy them in a minute. But it says we are not like that. It says you have come to Mount Zion. You've come to the city of the living God. You have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to the innumerable company of angels in festal array, in festive gathering. You have come to the general assembly and the assembly of the firstborn whose names are registered as citizens in heaven. You have come to God who is the just judge of all the universe. You have come to the spirit of the righteous, the redeemed in heaven who have been made perfect. It says we have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. A new covenant that unites God and man, according to the Amplified Bible. We have come to the sprinkled blood of Jesus, which speaks of mercy and a better, a more noble and a more gracious message than the blood of Abel, which cried out for vengeance. As we have gathered tonight, let's begin to thank our father that yes, physically speaking, your postcode might be on planet earth, but right now in the spirit realm, we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to the city of the living God. Let's thank the father that we are welcome on Mount Zion tonight. Father is welcomed us on Mount Zion. He says we can come boldly before his throne of grace and mercy. We thank him tonight that we have come to Mount Zion, that father welcomes us to Mount Zion. Father welcomes us to the innumerable company of angels that as we are praying the angels are here to take every scripture to take every decree to take every pronouncement to take every proclamation that even as we pray we have not come to any human being but we have come to mount zion we have come to the city of the living god we have come to god the judge of all the just souls of men made perfect we have come to jesus the mediator data of the new covenant. We have come to the blood that is speaking upon the mercy seat. We have come to that blood which is speaking a louder and a more gracious and a more noble message than the blood of Abel. As we come tonight, let the blood of Jesus begin to speak over us. Let the blood of Jesus speak over every voice here. Let the blood of Jesus speak over every woman. Let the blood of Jesus speak over the church of God. Let the blood of Jesus speak over the church of God. Let the blood of Jesus speak. Mercy, mercy, mercy that triumphs over judgment. That father, any sin, any transgression, any iniquity, anything in us, oh God, that would stand against us in the realm of the spirit. Lord, we come through the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus. Let the testimony of the blood be activated over us tonight. Lord, let the testimony of the blood of Jesus be activated over the church of God. Let the blood that is able to cleanse, the blood that is able to wash, the blood that is able to purify, let the blood begin to speak. Let the testimony of the blood be heard. We invoke the testimony testimony of the blood. We invoke the testimony of the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood in the name of Jesus. Let the blood speak the mercy of God that triumphs over judgment. Any judgments that have been released in the realm of the spirit against any child of God connected to this sanctuary. Father, we are pleading the blood. We are pleading the testimony of the blood. We are pleading the blood. We are pleading the blood. 
Oraba sheketeleba, Oraba baba seketelebosia. I plead the blood, I plead the blood. Hereke seketeleba shaya baba, Warogodo sokotorobo shakaba, Ragado sofregetele baba. We plead the blood, we plead the blood. Masoko dorobo shakaba legado, Masuketelebosia, Marogodo sokoraba shantalaba, Rogodo sofregeteleba. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for the blood. We exalt your name for the blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the blood silence any other voice that would want to speak concerning our lives, concerning the church of God. Let the blood of Jesus, let the blood speak. Let the blood of Jesus, let it silence uh, ordinances of wickedness, uh, ordinances of darkness, uh, powers of iniquity. Let the blood of Jesus speak. uh, Let the blood silence uh, anything that is not of God uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Saya Mahanda, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want us to continue with the blood of Jesus, but I want to add in Rome, um, Revelation 12, Revelation 12, from verse 1. The Bible says there was a great sign, a warning of a future event that appeared in heaven. I'm reading Amplified Bible. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, she was carrying the Messiah, and she cried out being in labor and in pain to give birth. Then another sign was seen in heaven. Behold a great fiery red dragon, Satan, with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven royal crowns, and his tail swept across the sky and dragged away a third of the stars of heaven and flung them to the earth. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. And she gave birth to a son, a male child who is destined to rule and shepherd all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that she would be nourished there for a thousand two hundred and sixty days, 42 months, three and a half years. And war broke out in heaven. Michael, the archangel and his angels waged war against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought. But they were not strong enough and did not prevail. And there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down. The age old serpent who is called the devil and Satan. He who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation, the power, the kingdom, the dominion, the reign of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters has been thrown down at last. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not love their lives to the death or renounce their faith even when faced with death. May God bless the reading of his word. Now, we know this passage um, is, is talking about Israel and the bringing forth of the Messiah and the persecution and all that. But we also know that prophetically speaking, it applies to any time when we are pregnant with something like right now. The sanctuary of God is pregnant with something because it's about to deliver the virtuous woman. It's about to deliver virtuous daughters and virtuous sons, virtuous children of God. We are about to deliver them. And we know that we we deliver these realities in the place of prayer. What we are going to see when the programs come to pass is just the manifestation of what God has already given us in the place of prayer. And we know that the evil one is a liar and will not sit down to watch us to give birth in peace. So we're going to pray tonight that as the Lord has given us grace to gather here tonight, that every way that the enemy wants to stand in opposition, the Bible records here that the fiery red dragon, That first of all, he swept across the sky and dragged a third of the stars of heaven and flung them to the earth. If he could convince angels to rebel against God, 
How much more us mere workers in the vineyard of God? We're going to first of all take a prayer that by the blood of Jesus and the authority God has given us in the, in the Holy Ghost, we come against every plan of the devil to divide and conquer as we are preparing for the outpouring of the glory of God. There shall not be any kind of rebellion in the workforce. There will be nothing like anyone no longer coming for choir practice, anyone no longer coming for intercessory prayer. In the name of Jesus, every plan of Satan to sweep away any worker. We come against it in the name of Jesus. We declare that we workers are empowered for the vineyard of God. We are empowered to do the work of God. We come against satanic plans and satanic agenda to cause any rebellion amongst the children of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, anything that would want to cause confusion, we take authority over you. Anything um, that would want rebellion, um, that would want people to oppose the plans of God uh, that would want people to oppose what God wants to do. We come against that spirit uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, any attack uh, against the workers of God uh, in the vineyard of God, uh, we come against the Lord said that my sheep know my voice in John 10. He says the voice of a stranger they will not listen to. Father, we declare over every man, every woman, every young person who is a worker in this parish, they will not hear the voice of the stranger, but they only hear the voice of Jesus. Every power that instigates rebellion, any power that instigates confusion, Lord, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We are serving together. We are serving in unity. We are serving in understanding. We are serving in wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, Masuka Talabayanda, we come against all opposition. We come against every satanic plan and opposition by the power in the name of Jesus. Any opposition that rises up against the work of God, we silence in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So the word of God goes on to tell us in that revelation that I read, Revelation um, chapter 12 and verse 3 and verse 4. This dragon, the Bible says, stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. He wanted to devour the fruit. He wanted to devour the fruit of her labor. He didn't want the fruit of the labor to manifest and for the woman to get that satisfaction that what I've been pregnant with all this time, it has come to pass. We want to pray that anyway, Satan and his agents have positioned themselves to rob us of the fruit out of the vineyard of God that we come against him in the mighty name of Jesus. I say every good spiritual pregnancy shall be delivered safely. What we are pregnant with right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, we will give birth. We will give birth in the name of Jesus. Nothing will destroy the power of God that is at work inside of us. Nothing will destroy what we are pregnant with. We are pregnant right now with miracles, with signs, with wonders. We are pregnant right now with salvation, with deliverance, with transformation because people are going to be changed. People will not remain the same. Masuka Talabaya, every power that is assigned against us to devour the manifestation of the fruit of prayer. We come against you in the name of Jesus. Anything that wants to destroy the manifestation of the fruit of prayer, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Every satanic strategic positioning, we come against against you, uh, every satanic strategic positioning uh, in whatever dimension, uh, wherever Satan and his agents uh, have, have, have positioned themselves uh, against the church of God, uh, we come against it, uh, we come against it. Shana mazuka talaba, zobregededebosia. Sheke telebalikata, rebrado sokotolobo, rimbragado sokondolobo, rimbrado sokorobo shaya, reba sukatalababa, ribrado sokondoloborobo, livrado sokorobo shia la bahanda, rogado so bregade de bosia, regada de basicatalaba, zumbrada de bose ke telebosia, masokondolobo shayaba, in the name of Jesus, every satanic positioning that have been designed to hinder, to disrupt the will of the Father concerning this conference. Lord, we come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Shekelebosiandarabakorabasiam. Masanda. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, any weapon that have been designed to devour the fruit of this, this meeting, Lord, we come against it in Jesus name. We stand against the wiles of the devil. We stand against his wiles and his schemes. Helebo shakara hande, lumba lumba zumbra dada basia. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Hallelujah. Revelation twelve verse five. The Bible talks about a son being given birth to who is destined to rule as a shepherd over the nations with a rod of iron. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says when we go to Psalm 110, it says the Lord, Father God, says to my Lord, the Messiah, his son, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet, subjugating them into complete submission. I'm reading Amplified. It says, the Lord will send the scepter of your strength from Zion saying, rule in the midst of your enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of your power, in the beauty of holiness, out of the womb of the morning. Rule in the midst of your enemies. We want to invite our Lord Jesus, the shepherd and the bishop of our souls to come and rule in our lives in the church of God. So, shepherd and bishop of our soul, come and rule in the midst of your children. Rule, almighty Jesus. Let your enemies become a footstool for your feet. In the mighty name of Jesus, come and rule, O God. Rule in the midst of us. Have your way, Lord. Let your perfect will be done. Let your scepter go out of Zion and be in charge over everything we do, over the planning committee, over the preparations. Rule in the midst of your people, Jesus. Rule over everything we are doing. Rule, my Lord Jesus Christ. Rule, Adonai. Rule in the midst of your room. Lord Jesus, room. Room with your rod of iron. Your rod of iron that destroys all opposition. That destroys all rebellion. That destroys all resistance. Rule thou in the midst of your people, Lord Jesus. Let your enemies become your footstool. In the maneka nighatula masaya. In the maseke leka sukata. Rebo sikatalaba. We, your people, shall be willing in the days of your power. Let every man, every woman become willing. These are the days of your power. We will not resist your power. We will not resist your will. We will not resist the move of the spirit. We will not resist what the Lord is doing. Rule in the midst of your children, Jesus. Rule in the name of Jesus. Come and rule Jesus. Come and rule Jesus. Let your people be willing. Let, oh God, touch every heart. Touch every heart, oh God. Let your people be willing. In the days of your power. In the beauty of your holiness. Out of the womb of the morning. Let your sons and your daughters be willing. Destroy, oh Lord, every opposition. Destroy, oh God, every resistance. Destroy, oh God. Anything that is not of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, my King. Be enthroned, Lord. Be enthroned. Be enthroned. And let your will be done, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. When we go to Revelation 12:6, the Bible says, as the dragon wanted to attack the woman, the woman fled. To a place that had already been prepared for her by God so that she would be nourished there for a prophetic season. She had a place where she was nourished so that the enemy had no access. We want to pray that the church of God, the ministers of God, our guest ministers, everybody around us, the intercessory team, everyone who is doing the work of God, all the children of God, everyone around us, our families, our children, our children's children, our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents, everyone connected to us, that we would be hidden. The Bible says in Psalm 91 that there is a place that is called the secret place of the Most High God. 
There is a place that is called the shadow of his wing where one can remain secure and rest in the shadow of the almighty where the enemy can no longer resist them, where the enemy's arrows cannot prevail. I want us to pray right now that the Lord almighty would hide all of us, would hide all of us, hide everyone connected to us. Vulnerable. Nobody will become vulnerable to satanic arrows. There is no way you and I can enjoy our breakthroughs if one of us is in trouble. Let God hide all of us. May we be hidden in the secret place of the Most High. May we be nourished under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we hide all your children behind the cross of Calvary. Let there be a line of the blood of Jesus around your children. A line, a bloodline of Jesus that cannot be crossed by demonic agencies and satanic agendas. In the name of Jesus, as in the days of the Passover of old, Lord when they behold the blood of the Lamb of God upon our lives, they will pass over in the name of Jesus. Cover your children. Let there be divine protection. You said you will save us, O God, from the snare of the fowler. You said you will save us, O God, from the noisome pestilence. You will cover us with your feathers under your wings, Lord. We trust in your truth, O God. We take shield. You are our shield and our buckler. You namasu kalabasiya. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day. We will not be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Nobody in the church of God uh, will become a victim of pestilence. No COVID-19, no flu, no nothing, no nothing, no sickness of any sort. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Lord, we are hidden from any destruction that wastes people at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side uh, and ten thousand at our right hand, uh, but it shall not come near the church of God. Uh, we are protected uh, by your presence. Uh, Father, let your fire be around us. Uh, you say there's the mountains are around Jerusalem. So the Lord uh, encamps around his people. Let your glory encamp around your people. Protect your children, Lord. Uh, may we be divinely shielded uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Father, I pray special protection for all the intercessors uh, as they gather, Lord, uh, in the gap uh, and they are standing on behalf uh, of your kingdom, Father, Lord. Uh, I pray special protection uh, on the intercessory team, uh, all the women who are praying this hour, all your servants who are praying this hour, Mighty God, I pray, your divine protection, your divine protection, the enemy cannot prevail against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Prepare a place, a prophetic place where your children are hidden for prophetic seasons. Father, so that the enemy cannot interfere with what you're doing for such a time as this. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. We speak safety. We speak safety for safeties of the Lord. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. We trust in El Shaddai, the double-breasted God who is more than enough to meet our needs. We trust in Jehovah Sabaoth, the mighty man of war, the commander-in-chief of the angel armies. We trust in you, Lord. El Giboa, the mighty warrior who is great in battle. We trust in you. We trust in your protection. We trust in the defense systems of heaven. We trust in the angel armies, angels of war. We loose you concerning the children of God, uh, warring angels, uh, you are loose right now. Uh, your your assignment uh, is the protection of the church of God. Uh, you are loose angels of God. Uh, ministering spirits, uh, we loose you from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Uh, we loose you, the angelic ministers. Uh, in baluka seteyaba in the mighty name of jesus thank you father you are worthy to be praised blessed be your name forever in jesus mighty name we pray amen going back again to revelation 12 from verse 7 war broke out in heaven 
And that war was not between God and Satan. It was between Archangel Michael and his angels against Satan. Because Satan is no match for our father. Father doesn't need to fight Satan. Lord Jesus doesn't need to fight Satan. He was dealt with by the archangels and the angelic teams. And he says that the dragon and his angels fought, but they could not prevail. They could not prevail. They were not strong enough. They could not prevail. And there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. We're going to ask God because we know that the dragon been cast out to the earth. But you know what? There are some territories where the dragon cannot find a place. He cannot find a foothold. There is no landing ground. He has no place. In heaven, he had no place. In the parish of God, he must have no place. There must be no landing ground. You know what, beloved? Some believers, yes, they may give their lives to Christ, but sometimes they volunteer themselves as landing ground. When the patriarch Jacob laid his head down to sleep one day, the Bible says there was right there by the pillar of stone, a ladder into heaven with angels ascending and descending. The angels were already on the earth. They went in heaven. They were here and they ascended. What are they ascending with? They are ascending with the prayers of the saints. They are ascending with a message for the King of Kings that here, this person is in a place where a portal has been opened, where we can land blessings on them. So they ascend into heaven. They collect the blessings. They come back down. They ascend, they collect in the same way that some children of God are portals for his glory. Where, wherever they're in a service, the heavens over them are open. The angels can ascend and descend. Some people, are open doors for Satan and his agents to become, you know, to begin to, to descend and ascend. They move from them into the pit of hell. They come back, they move like that. They become a landing ground. So I want us to pray first of all, that by the blood of Jesus, anyone in our midst who will become a landing ground for Satan, may the mercy of God prevail over judgment, that in the name of Jesus, that evil assignment cannot continue, whoever it is, that when they come into the church of God, they create an entrance, a doorway for demons to begin to traffic we are saying no, no to demonic trafficking, no trafficking of Satan in any way, in the mighty name of Jesus, anyone amongst us who has become an open door, a portal of demonic trafficker we are pleading the blood of Jesus and we are saying no no it can no longer continue that the place of demons cannot be found in the church of God in the mighty name of Jesus the demonic powers cannot have a foothold in the church of God the Bible says neither give room to the devil for we are not ignorant of his devices we refuse to give him a room we refuse to give him a foothold we refuse to give him a doorway in the mighty name of Jesus whoever am amongst us uh, has become a doorway for satanic trafficking. Uh, we plead the blood of Jesus tonight uh, and we say no. Anyone uh, who has become a market for demons, uh, a market ground uh, for demons uh, to enter and exit, uh, we say no. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, no to any demonic trading in our midst. Uh, we say no. The trading floors of Lucifer cannot be found uh, in the church of God. The trading floors of Lucifer, you cannot be found in the church of God. We say you have no place. You have no place in the church of God. We call down fire. We call down fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Consume and destroy the works of darkness. By the blood of Jesus, we close the portals that have been opened to the enemy's camp. We close the doors that have been opened to satanic trafficking. Any evil wind blowing in our midst, we close the windows to the evil wind of the enemy me. Any evil wind, uh, evil anointing, uh, contrary anointing, uh, contrary things. Uh, Lord, we shut the door. We shut the door in the name of Jesus. Uh, by the authority that God has given us, uh, we shut the door. By the authority in the name of Jesus, uh, we shut the door. We shut that portal. Lord, we declare Satan and his agents have no place in the church of God. They have no place. Uh, they cannot function. They cannot prevail. They cannot function. Evil assignments will terminate you in the name of Jesus. Evil assignments against the church of God We terminate you now. We terminate you now. You are terminated in the name of Jesus.
we terminate evil assignments we terminate you in the name of jesus we say you are not welcome you are not welcome on behalf of our pastorate on behalf of our leaders on behalf of the church of god we say satanic trafficking you are not permitted you are evicted in the mighty name of jesus you are not welcome here your place is not found in the mighty name of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray amen in luke ten nineteen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in fact, if we read Luke 10 from verse 18, the Lord Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning from the sky. And he says, behold, I have given you my church, my disciples, my believers. I have given unto you power, authority, exousia to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said, nothing shall by any means harm you or hurt you. I give you exousia. Authority means you don't just have the power to do something. You have the right to do it. You, you have been sanctioned by God the Father. It's like that person. Imagine that a person is driving on the motorway and the speed limit in England said 70 miles an hour. And then that person is driving at 90 miles an hour. And all of a sudden they see blue lights flashing behind them. It's the police. Now, they, they don't say Oh, I want to see whether this policeman has money or whether he has muscles or whether he has this. What is he going to do to me? Immediately you see the blue lights. You know that the king of the nation is against you. You know that that policeman is no longer about him. It's about the king that is acting on behalf of. And so you stop. Whether the policeman or the policewoman is smaller than you, is tiny, has no muscles or whatever else. Even if your car is faster than the car of the police. Once they stop you in the authority that's been vested in them by the king of the land, you stop and you do whatever next they tell you to do. So in a similar way, we are here. As the ambassadors of Christ, we are the Holy Ghost police. Father God has given us the authority. Jesus says, behold, I give unto you authority, exousia, power to trample on the serpents and the scorpions. Over any power of the enemy, they can by no means harm you. I want us to use that authority tonight and begin to take our authority and say, I take authority over any serpent, over any scorpion, over any territorial demon, over principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, all the ordinances of wickedness, whether witchcraft covens, warlocks in our region, whatever is operating here in the atmosphere, we take authority over you in the name of Jesus by the name above all names we rebuke your works we rebuke your evil activities we rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus you cannot prevail you cannot hurt the children of God you cannot do anything against the church of God we render all the powers of the enemy powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. For God has highly exalted Jesus. According to Philippians 2, 9 and 10. God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name above all names. That is the mention of the name Jesus. Every knee must bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, of things under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord by the authority in the name of Jesus. By the authority invested in the church. We rebuke the works of the enemy. We take authority. Any serpentine spirit, any python spirit, any evil prophecies, anything, Lord, that represents the serpent, we come against it in Jesus' name. Any scorpion, any afflictor, anything that causes pain, causes affliction, we come against you in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against you. We trample all the power of the enemy. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven has been given unto me. Go ye therefore. We go in the power Jesus has given us. We go in the authority Jesus has given us. We silence the works of darkness. We silence all of them. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. By the authority God has given us, we silence you, you witchcraft coven, wherever you've gathered, making incantations against the church of God, wherever you've gathered, your rituals are broken, your incantations are broken, your hexes are broken, your hoaxes are broken, your evil pronouncements are broken, your evil proclamations are broken, your evil decrees can never come to pass, they fall to the ground as dust, they cannot prevail. Every demonic agenda to lock the heavens over us. We come against you in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we honor you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Revelation 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation, the power, and the kingdom, the dominion, the reign of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them. Before our God day and night, they overcame and conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. We want to testify that the blood of Jesus is silencing any accusations against the church of God. Satan has a case file against them and their lineage. And he says, these ones cannot be blessed because they did A, B, C, and D. And he continues to resist them. So once those accusations are, re- are, are hanging in the realm of the spirit, the person doesn't see the manifestation of the goodness of God because the accusations are standing against them. It's like in those days when we read Zechariah chapter 3 and Joshua the high priest is standing before the Lord and Satan is standing at his right hand because he's wearing a filthy garment and Satan is resisting him. Until the Lord had to say, I rebuke you, Satan. Satan, you are rebuked. Is this not the the brand that had been snatched out of the fire? Give him a new garment. God gave him a new garment, gave him a new diadem. And that was the end of the story. We want to ask God that any accusations that are standing against any one of us, any of our brothers and sisters, any accusations that would cause Satan to hinder people's deliverance, the divine visitation of God, anything that would hinder people from seeing the goodness of God in, in, in the land of the living. Let the blood of Jesus begin to speak and silence the accusation. Any cases that Satan is bringing, cases of accusation, Father, we plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We testify that the blood of Jesus shall never lose its power. We testify that the blood of Jesus is all powerful, almighty. The blood of Jesus, uh, it cleanses the deepest sinner. Uh, for the blood of Jesus uh, is able to deliver. The blood speaks a louder and more gracious message uh, than the blood of Abel. Father, we are praying any accusation that would stand against the church of God. Uh, we are pleading the blood of Jesus. Any accusations uh, that would cause people to be robbed. Uh, Lord, we are pleading the blood of Jesus. We are pleading the blood. We plead the blood. Uh, let the blood speak. Uh, let the blood speaker silence the accusations accusations against our families uh, accusations against our bloodlines uh, accusations uh, against any man any woman any child any lineage uh, we are pleading the blood uh, we are pleading the blood uh, let the blood speaker uh, let the blood speaker uh, oh, father god uh, arise oh god uh, let your enemies be scattered uh, let those who hate you let them fall for our sake uh, by reason of the blood of jesus uh, let the blood speaker uh, silence uh, Whatever accusation, whatever resistance uh, Satan would be putting up uh, against your children. Father, we are pleading the blood. We lose everyone from every accusation. Lord, we plead the blood. We plead the blood. Anything that is saying they didn't do this, they didn't do that, we are pleading the blood. Anything that says this one cannot be blessed, we are pleading the blood. Anything that is speaking against us, Lord, we are pleading the blood. We are pleading the blood. We are pleading the blood. 
Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Elebo sokoto lobo shaya. Mazuka tadabo siya. Masoko to robo shaya. Baba baba baba. Rogodo sokondo robo shaya. Radadaba sekete lebo siya. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, the blood, the blood, the blood. Regede de de boriga da siya, masoko do do boria ba 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 ba. Regado soko do do bosiya, makoro ba 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 ba. Jegede le bosiya ndara bosiya, makoro ko do siya ndara bosiya, makora ba shaka talaba. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, we worship you, thank you for the power in the blood. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We want to speak over the church of God. The Bible tells us in Romans 8 from verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And Bible scholars tell me that in the original manuscripts, there wasn't that additional verse that says who walk in the spirit. It says that the Bible translators added it because they thought, ah, uh-uh, ah, this is too gracious. Can God really be saying this? That there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. And then the Bible says in verse two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus It renders the law of sin and death null and void and powerless. The way that I understand it is like this. And I want us to use this as our prayer point. If, for example, right now, mommy uh, takes me on holiday and says we are off to Dubai. We go to Manchester Airport. We catch one of those A380 Airbuses, Airbus that Emirates uses. Massive, massive plane. And that plane, as big as it is. When it begins to taxi down the runway and gather speed, all of a sudden, the law of gravity that if me and you try to jump off from a roof will bring us back to the earth very quickly. That law of gravity, it doesn't work for that humongous plane that is wearing like 500,000 tons. That plane, as it begins to speed down the runway, despite the fact that the law of gravity exists, when that plane takes off, the law of gravity becomes uh, irrelevant. Because a different law takes over the law of aerodynamics. The law of aerodynamics lifts the plane. So even though gravity exists, it's no longer relevant. Let's, let's bring, bring it back to Romans 8 now. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, we can compare it to that aerodynamic law. That says, yes, sin and death exist. People get sick on earth. They are this, they are frustrated. But for us, children of God, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus elevates us above that. It doesn't matter what is going on. We are working on a different dimension because there is a different law at work inside of us. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free from the law of sin and death. We want to pray now. Lord, because there is a different law, because there is a different law at work in us, the works of the enemy become irrelevant in our lives in the gathering of God's children we are speaking um, there is no condemnation over the children of God as we gather we are not condemned uh, and Lord we thank you that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and God for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death we prophesy healing deliverance transformation elevation uh, uh, increase uh, empowerment uh, enlargement uh, the glory of God uh, the goodness of God, uh, the power of God uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, it doesn't matter what devil has done. Uh, Lord, you have given us uh, a superior dimension. Uh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It silences the law of sin and death. Uh, anyone who is operating under sin and death, uh, we declare they are changed right now. They are formation. Because by the blood of Jesus, uh, there is no condemnation. Uh, by the blood of Jesus, uh, According to your word in Revelation 12 10, uh, yes, Lord, we declare, we prophesy, we pronounce uh, now salvation has come to the church of God. Power of God has come, the kingdom of God has come, the dominion of God has come, the reign of our God has come, the authority of His Christ has come. Uh, we are under your dominion, we are under your reign, uh, we are under the glory, we are under your cloud uh, in the name of Jesus. Everything is under your power. We surrender to you. We surrender to your will. We surrender to your glory. And we thank you for it, Adonai. We bless your name for your mercies. Uh, Thank you for what you have done for us. Uh, To you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.